Hey, I'm Kathleen Gamer, and welcome to a Pro Cycling Manager 2021 tutorial, specifically for career mode, on how to find and develop young talent, the best young talent. How do you go from the likes of this, older squad, low potential, into a group of riders that are like this, early 20s, max potential or near max potential across the board, and then ultimately turn that group into your team leaders who will take you on up through the ranks into world tour status and into tour de france champions and or world champions in all i'd say there's about five primary methods in which to find and develop young talent a couple of them i think are less impactful but the other three can used can be used pretty effectively as methods to find and develop young talent. But I'll go ahead and cover all five and give you my assessment on especially those two and why they're a little less relevant. Now, first one we're gonna go over is management of a development team. You might get some fantastic young writers coming out of a development team. You can go regional, you can go country, or you can go world on your recruitment zone. The cost is different. And the results are going to be more broad depending on that. Favoring a type of rider can certainly boost what you're in for. And it's going to help bring in new gen riders who may be good. But it's hit and miss. It's totally hit and miss. You can have everything from a 1-2 potential to a 5-8 world champion type rider. You don't know what you're going to get out of it. And therefore, it's one of the less effective ways to go about finding and developing young talent. It's also a spendy way to go try to find and develop young talent. I haven't used it in quite a few years. I am in my current playthrough in the series that we're actually on right now to show this. I am planning on actually utilizing it as I haven't done it in, in a number of years. I do want to utilize it and see how it goes and see how, if, if at all, it has changed over the last few years. But it's not a method that I use on a regular basis at all. The second method, and this one has its use, and actually it's something that I've used a lot this season based on the constraints that I have of my series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go check out episode one. You'll find out uh, for yourself what I'm, I'm dealing with within my series. But this method is useful for your sponsorship, for sponsor confidence. If you don't have unlimited cash, if you are trying to grow and develop a squad, you're starting from little to no money or a moderate amount of money and you need to please your sponsors year in, year out, and they expect riders from a certain region, this is very handy. Otherwise, this method has its uses but isn't as helpful. But what you can do here is let's say you have a French sponsor and they care that you have French riders. They care that you have 50% French riders. Well, there's a couple ways to go about that. You can just spend a ton of money, 150000 per month, on a Julian Alaphilippe type, or maybe that's beyond your budget. Let's say you got to go down a bit further, and you got to get out of the big names, and you don't have those options. You don't know this guy, but you look at a 24-year-old who's a 74 overall, who's making minimal money, and has no contract on the next year. Do you want to commit 15 dossier points to them because that's all your team can afford? Why would I want to unless I know about that rider? So the biggest thing of all is scouting is massively important. You need to scout riders and you need to scout riders before you get into the dossier periods because if you wait until you get to the dossier period, you don't know. And then it's going to be hit and miss. And it's a crapshoot. You can at least assign a scout and get them scouted before the signing period comes. And so then you know by by time you reach August whether you want to sign this guy or not. But ultimately, scouting is a, a year-round task, a year-round job that you need to periodically go in and select a number of scouting reports that you're looking for to be effective long-term going after young talent. But one effective method, and we have a ton of French riders to choose from, so one way is you can reorder things via age. And with that, we can now do a couple things that would be really handy. You can see we have 
just a handful of 18 year olds these are going to be new gens these are guys first year riders and of those you, you have some very low quality guys herbert might be okay he's an 18 year old stage racer who's already okay climbing okay resistance if you're a tiny continental team you have limited dossier points you only have three to go after this is somebody that you can right click assign a scout pick one of your scouts and then assign go after the number of reports in progress go after whoever's got the fewest and then assign those scouts and hopefully within a couple of weeks to a month you'll have a report back on them and you'll know what their potential is and you'll know whether somebody like this is worth worthy to go after more likely though i'd spend a little bit more in dossier points knowing that they have no contract next season is really good really helpful we're looking at contract here in the search category but seeing somebody who's starting off a little bit better is super young even with low potential Andre Alex, if you were to get this guy, this sprinter, who's already in the low 70s, get him scouted up. If he's got potential, 3.6 would be tolerable. 4.7 or a 5.8 potential on somebody who's already a 72 year, 72 overall and 18 years of age. Sky's the ceiling for a rider like this. This is the type of rider that I'm constantly going after, trying to bring into this squad. I need to know his potential, right? If he's won four potential, yeah, he's not going to turn out to be much. Let's be honest for a second. 18 and a 72. Guaranteed, he's either level zero or level one or no more than level two. There are 20 levels. A rider levels up 20 times. Guaranteed, this guy's got minimum 18 levels to go. Now, if his potential is a one, he's still is and will develop but the problem with a potential one is his rate of development is going to be very slow but even if he's already level two he's got 18 levels to go he has a ceiling that he is going to build towards now the problem with a potential one is it's going to take him 10 years to just get a handful of levels and he's never going to actually see level 20 he's never going to actually see the potential but even if he only sees a few more development levels, he's still going to hit a 75, 74, maybe a 76, and be an okay rider. Maybe he's just a lead-out guy for you. Maybe he's a domestique, but as a, a 74 domestique, not bad to have. This is somebody you could sign for an absolute minimum amount of money, and even with low potential, probably wouldn't be bad. But what we're going after is those 5.8s or 4.7 potential riders. So get a scout on him, look after him, see what you got. That is a prime target right there though. Now, looking at the 19 year olds, same sort of deal, 60, 61. If you start low, your ceiling is probably low. Now, here's the thing about the game. Unless you get into the database, you don't know what a rider's ceiling, but a new gen, the way this game is built, low potential or high potential, if somebody starts as a 57 overall, they probably have a low ceiling. Odds are in that favor. If they start high 60s or low 70s, odds are they have a ceiling that's significantly above that. The game works in steps, generally, in the database. And again, unless you actually go into the database and look at the actual ceiling of every writer, of every attribute, if you keep that a mystery, if you don't cheat, there the game works in steps. So if you're a 55, you can probably gain about 15 to 20 points. You can get to maybe a 70. Maybe you can get to a 75 on your 20th and final level. So even if they have 5'8 potential, they're still only going to eventually get into the low mid 70s. But if you're starting higher, the step is still the same. It ramps up, meaning you want a young rider who's early in their levels, because again, you only get 20 levels, and you level up fast early, you level up slower later on. There's a scale to that. We're not going to go through the scale on this one. I do know the scale. I do know how the 20 levels are achieved. Somebody low potential probably isn't going to hit their 20th and final level at any point. So higher potential is good. 
they're going to level up faster, and they're going to actually achieve the levels that are available. They're going to hit that step. They're going to hit that ceiling. Good young talent, meaning already a high base. The older they are, the more levels they're probably already into, which means they're going to slow down in their development. They're not going to develop as fast. So you want the best, youngest talent that you can find. That's the simple part of the game. Trick is finding them. Lue, 70 overall, 19. You want to throw a scout on this guy. 68, 19, not bad. You could probably throw a scout on him. 71 overall, 19. That's your target. 71, 19. Okay, now you're tracking how we're finding these guys. Now, you can see here, if we had a French sponsor and I scout one, if I scout those seven guys, you're guaranteed to have that wide range of potential. But those seven guys already have that baseline. And with that step up, guaranteed some of those seven are going to be low potential. Probably a couple guys, super low potential. You won't want to bother. And then you're going to have two or three guys that are somewhere in the middle. They're going to have 3-5, or they're going to have a 3-6, or they're going to have a 2-5. And you may not want to bother. But guaranteed, out of those seven guys, you're going to find probably a 5-8, but you'll definitely find a 4-7. Maybe a couple 4-7s. Maybe a 3-6 at a 4-7. And starting at a 70 or a 71, a ceiling of maybe an 80, at 4 potential, they might not see level 20, meaning they might not hit an average of 80 by the end of their career. But they'll probably get to level 17 or 18. They'll get up there before they start deteriorating, before they get old. They'll get close. So even if the potential isn't great, even if the ceiling isn't quite there, an 80 overall potential, let's say you get 78. 78 is a really good rider to have on your team and you got them for minimum money and you got them young and you're able to keep them in your squad that's a good rider to have so even if it, the potential only ends up being four or five they're gonna get close to their ceiling and that's an okay rider to have but the four sevens and the five eights and the potential are gonna likely have a high ceiling as long as they're starting in the high to low seven high 60s to low 70s and you got them young they have a lot of levels to go and in their first year or two they should bump up a lot and they should get mid 70s by the time they're 21 years of age and then only have that little bit further to go and even on the potential four it might take four or five years instead of three years to kind of get into the mid 70s but they'll get there they'll come along they'll just come along a little slower and if you again have a french sponsor and you need french riders those two or three riders, those are your must signs. Those are the ones you go after in that first year. Now, not every nation is going to have a pool this large. So if you're running a playthrough of Australian riders, you're probably going to have a smaller pool or a significantly smaller pool. You're not going to have as many to choose from. That'll keep your sponsors happy by getting some of those in-nation ones. Now, I told you there's three better methods because, like I said, you're not going to come along a France very often. The easiest to use, the most helpful, but the easily forgotten method is this one. If you go into your team view, youth development, and then the first tab is scouting. From here, this is what your scout does naturally on their own without your feedback. Now, if you go in and start scouting people directly, like... Arnautovic. Arnautovic is somebody that I went after directly. I scouted Arnautovic. He's a 67, so he's right into that range where you want to be, that minimum about a 66 to a 67, depending on what level you're at. I'm just continental, so 67 is pretty good already. But we found that he's got the very good two grand champion potential, 5'8". Now, I don't have to go through here. This is set up alphabetically. If you click on potential, all the 5'8s right there at your disposal. And this is an incredible tool for development. And also you can find the guys who have the highest ceiling. Some of these are gonna come in as low level guys. Berlikov is another one that I directly went after. He's a 70 overall, 5'8 potential. And this is somebody for, in my series, I'm looking to sign for this coming season. I have a dossier open, actually on both of these guys for that matter, but I have dossiers on these guys. I'm going to sign them in August, a month from now. 
These are going to be fantastic additions to my squad. And Berlokov is pretty good already. He's already 71 Mountain. He's already got 65 Resistance, 70 Recovery. Time trialing is not quite there, but at just 19 years of age, this is a guy who can't be more than a few levels into development. He's probably got a good 17 levels ahead of him, and he could maybe hit a 79 or an 80, maybe a 78 based on kind of his distribution of attributes. But not in 71, he's going to be a good climber. I mean, he's he's bound to hit an 80 before this thing is done. I don't know where his ceiling is. Maybe his ceiling is a 79. Either way, it's a good climber. This is somebody who was scouted naturally by my scout. And this is somebody I would stay away from. He is 5'8 potential, but he's a 61 overall. And he's already on a squad. He's already with Quebeca. Is low quality. Yes, he has high potential. But from here, he's only going to get into the low mid-70s. I can sign these guys for the same or similar amount of money. And they're already, they're already 10 points better than he is. So I'd stay away from this guy. Now, the problem with this screen is you cannot open a dossier on any rider from this screen. You could, come August, try to directly sign the rider. However, if you didn't open a dossier on them, you have no idea what their interest level is going to be in signing with your team. And if you have a smaller continental team or a continental pro team, low reputation, odds are they're not going to be very favorable. And if it turns out that their interest is low, as in in the red, they will not sign. You must have yellow or green interest, meaning 31% or above interest in order to sign a rider. You need a dossier. You need to open dossiers on the riders you're going to go after. Best way to do this, and there's two methods that ultimately work. One's the hard way, One's the easy way, but it involves a little bit of effort on your part. One, remember the name. I picked out that I want Arnautovic and Berlokov. Remember the names? Okay, Arnautovic, Berlokov. Then click your buttons, get over to your dossier, find those two riders, and open a dossier on them. Hope you have enough points. See what the interest level is. If they're at 100%, don't bother. You're good. If it's less than 100%, open the dossier. If you can afford the points, get after them get those guys. But if you didn't open a dossier because they're at 100%, well, what then? Are you going to remember it come August 1st? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Could be a problem. And that's why I like the second method better. But it requires a little extra effort on your part. Simple thing. And I'll show you my example right here. Make a list. First two names on that list, top left corner, Arnautovic, Berlikov. Write it down. Sticky note, notebook, Second screen with a Google Sheets open. Whatever you got to do, whatever your method is, write it down. Short list them. Right click, put them on short list. Still doesn't help you when you get to your dossier though. I like the other method. Write it down, get it in front of your face so that when you go into the dossiers, you got the name. You look up the name, assign them, and you're good to go. This is the most effective, useful method, but it's not going to find you everybody because your scout is going to land plenty of duds. These are open scout reports that I'm searching for. Hiroshi Oda, 1-2 potential. This guy is bad. And oh look, it's somebody that we are. This method produces mixed results and a lot of people forget about it. Method number four. This one's good if you're getting late, you got a little bit of budget, you've got a little bit of points left, and you're trying to fill a gap and you don't necessarily have the scouting done on some riders, what you can do here is go into the search, so world, and then search, and then go with contract, end of season, and then search. This is one of those things you could do a week into August where you have a little bit of money left, or it's September and you've got a little bit of money left, or you've got one little grouping of dossiers left. And what you can do from here is you can search by average and see everybody who is out of contract, meaning they're available. You could see how many points it's gonna to take to get them signed. You could see what money they're making now, so you can at least get some sort of comparison for what it's gonna to cost to get them. And then you can scroll through. The fun one for, for this is if we add, the fun one for this is if we change it to not just out of contract next year, but free 
as in free right now, as in not on a team. And these are the riders that are often the easiest to sign. They have higher interest with everybody because they don't have a job. And so they're naturally looking for a job and they're more willing to sign with a smaller team to get onto a team. And so these tend to be some easy targets. These also tend to be some of those new gens, those 18 year olds just coming in or 19 year olds just coming in were just created into the database, didn't exist prior and come in with talent. But if you organize this by attribute average, you can immediately see who the best unsigned riders are, which are gonna be the easiest targets. They're gonna sign for a little bit less. The, the interest level could be high. You could keep an eye on the dossier points. This is a fantastic way to go after and either set up your scouting or choose some of your last minute riders to potentially sign. These are good quality guys, but these 18 year olds especially, for Mullen, Alex, who we already pointed out, throw a scout on them early in the year. And you will very, very quickly find which of these are your gems, which of these are those new gen, future world class riders. And then those are your first signings <laughs> come August 1st. And now we go into our final method. For this one, I wouldn't do this for your first dossier period. Your first dossier period through the other methods, you should have a list of guys. You should have a list of names that you begin with, that you open with. But let's say you're getting into July or late June and you've used up your list, you've exhausted your list, you've assigned all the dossiers you're going to sign. And similar to what we just did, you can do something similar from this screen and do it in a few different ways. You can sort this and they do have filters now this year, which is nice. These filters did not exist in previous years, but you have cost, specialization, interest, country, age. Age is a great one, right? We need young talent. We want 22. We want under the age of 22. Here we just suddenly went down into only young writers, right? Now I'm looking at 18, 19, 20, 21 year old writers. Love that filter. Wow. What a handy thing. Here's what I was just talking about. Available rider, not on a team, stage racer. This was somebody we were just looking at at a 74 overall. Now I even see his interest level. And this is why I like this better than the other method. I could see who has interest. And if you're getting late in the season, you can organize by average and then by interest. And it'll kind of carry over your previous column, your previous sorting. So you can get these in a way where I can see there's a couple 67s that already have high interest. Well, I don't need to open a dossier on somebody who's got 100%. I do need to open a dossier. And if you're in July, your odds of getting somebody to 100%. And if you're worried about money, that's going to be important. You need those 76s. So what do we have for somebody who's already high in interest but needs that little push to get to 100%? I got two 20-year-olds who are already a 69 overall. I know Michael Garrison, so I know what he's going to be, but you have 69 overall, young, high interest. You have three dossier points left. You have five dossier points. Throw it on one of those, throw a scout on them, and see what happens come August 1st. Maybe you get that report back, maybe you don't, but maybe that one more guy you went after ends up being the one. You can do the same thing, get into the 51% range. See what's available. Go to the top of the list. Now we're talking. 71. A few 70s. Maybe that's the writer. Throw a scout on them. Open those dossiers. Maybe they don't get to 100%. But now by having their dossier, at least they're on your list when you go to sign. You know what it's going to cost. You got your scouting done. At least you got your target present. All right. That's how to find writers. Signing. August 1st, you should know how to do that already or check out other tutorials for that one. I will have a career mode tutorial. It's not out yet, but uh, I do one every year. I have a PCM 20 and it does cover signing uh, within that tutorial. So check that one out to know how to do signings. But let's now say you've signed your writers. You have your 5'8 potential guys, your 4'7 potential guys, your good young talent. 
Now, how do we get them towards that level 20? How do we develop those riders? On to the next phase. It turns out that this phase is way simpler than you know. Way, way simpler. There's really only three factors that go into development of a rider. It's not their morale. It's not how much they race. It's not how well they do in races. It's training and potential and the ceiling. And that's it. It's all it comes down to. And the controllable part, other than who you signed, the controllable part is the training. And it's the essential piece to see rapid development in your riders. Now, in my series, I already have some high potential guys that I signed this last year. We started with absolute crap, but we now have a wide number of high quality, high potential riders that should be developing rapidly. But right now, they're not. And there's one chief reason for it. And it's intentional within my series, by the way. But I have three trainers that are cheap, that are affordable, all with national reputation. These trainers are crap. Therefore, the results are crap. I did a big test on this last year during PCM 20 Champion Series. And if you saw the series, you saw how the results on this turned out. Your trainer has a massive impact. Massive impact on development of a rider. Besides finding the good young talent is the huge key. These guys, not going to cut it. What you need to do is get the best trainers that you can afford. And specifically, the best groundbreaking trainer. If you're on a budget, if, you, if money's unlimited, you get the best trainers, period. You get legendary trainers across the board. Keep them below their maximum effectiveness. Cardosa is already training seven guys, but he can do that effectively. You can train up to eight. You get to nine, they lose effectiveness. So never have more than eight riders assigned to a staff member. But if we go into the new staff, you have legendary reputation, international, national, and regional. As soon as you can, and they go up in cost as they get better and better. As soon as you can, you need to get a groundbreaking legendary coach. But you can see this one here, Leonhard, 30000 a month. That's huge. 60000 up front. It's expensive. But as soon as you can afford it, you need the best trainers you can get. Groundbreaking matters the most. Modern matters a lot. Traditional, don't worry about traditional. Here's the problem with traditional. Traditional, as you can see, our team, which is organized right now by their average, by their ratings. Most of my groundbreaking guys are near the top of the list. My modern guys near the top of the list. All my traditional guys are at or near the bottom of the list. And here's why. Ray Lanou, 29 years of age. Zervis, 31. These are the holdovers from the first year. DeLuna, 32. And these guys are all below 70. They're all my lowest quality guys. The way the game works, and it's not 100%, there is overlap, there's, there's a bit of a mesh on the way this functions, but traditional style training, and a writer who wants traditional style training is either old and has already gone through their levels or has really weak potential. So they're not going to develop quickly. It's a correlation. It's not something that works 100% of the time. You can have somebody who is good potential, but only a modern trainer or modern style for training. Now you can see a perfect example of why Arroya, the way this game works, the way this functions, 26 years of age, so he's already fairly developed, 73 overall, so he's already come through quite a few levels, 3-5 potential, so he's okay. He's probably not at level 20 yet, probably not even close. He's probably past level 10. He's somewhere in between. I'd say he's probably a level 12, maybe a 13. And at this point, development's going to be slow and hard. But he's still got a couple levels ahead of him but before he gets too old and starts to deteriorate. And that's why he's already modern. Groundbreaking is for your high potential young riders. And as they get older and as they increase through the levels and they get closer to maxing out, the style backs off. 
and it backs off progressively. So groundbreaking is the most important to developing young talent. That's not to say that you can't have, and you can see Uribe here at 32, close to if not fully maxed out on his potential. He's a 3-4 potential. So he's not going to get better. We're probably not going to see a level up for Uribe at all. And in fact, we might see at 32, we might see a few of his attributes start to decline. Mario Grego is a good example of how there are exceptions to this rule. 20 years of age, 65 overall, modern style, and high potential. My guess, he's probably closer to the 5 and not the 8. My guess, his ceiling as a 65 overall right now, his ceiling's probably not that high. My guess is three years when this contract is up, he's still going to be below 70, and I may not be re-signing him. We might be letting this guy go. I have a feeling he's potential five and a moderate ceiling. The scout maybe saw a little more, and he's not quite there. But for the most part, if you look through with age, the young guys are all groundbreaking. There's your one exception in, in Grego. And as the group gets older, you're pushing into modern. You have just one, Mugisha, who's a little bit older and still on groundbreaking. And I wouldn't be surprised if he changes style down to modern before too long because he's already gained a few levels with us. And then the older guys are traditional or modern. There's your breakdown on training style. Now, the important thing is to assign a trainer who is of the same style as the rider. We don't know on a few of these guys what their style is, but a young up and coming talent, guess, assume groundbreaking. On the individual rider tab, you can go in, go to their training, and this is where you go for their training style and who their trainer is. As you assign through, you can see we can go to eight, still excellent effectiveness. As soon as it becomes less than excellent, that affects all the riders. So never go beyond eight riders, but that's where you assign your guys. Good trainers, correct style, and the last important piece, maintain relations. A legendary trainer with the correct training style, but no relationship with the athlete, they're still going to have a very complicated time and their development is going to slow drastically. Maintain the best relationships you can, have the right trainer and the best available trainer you can get on your hands, and you will see riders develop because the other stuff, the racing, the results, the morale, none of it impacts development. It all just comes down to rider potential, rider ceiling, what level of those 20 levels they're on, and then the training. And the training is the big one that you can control, and then finding the good young talent who guaranteed would be far from their max level and should have 5'8 or 4'7 potential, meaning they're going to level up faster. When you throw in good quality training, it's going to happen quickly and you're going to see the best young talent. And that's how you do it, folks. My recommendation in terms of contracts, three-year deals all the time, especially if you know the potential. If you don't know the potential, throw in a two-year deal or something occasionally but the longer you can lock them down at minimal money, especially if they're leveling up fast, the better. And then hang on to the ones you can, get rid of the rest. That's going to do it for this tutorial. I'm Decathlon Gamer. If you liked what you saw here, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.